Hello. Hello. Thank you very much for the time of this interview. No problem. Thank you. So, um, well, finally, we have some new music from Santi Gold. Yes. So, highest presence and Ain Ready. Um, such a powerful song. Ain Ready in the whole concept video also about highest priestess more cinematic in a way and especially aim ready is such a, uh, an intense video you know <clears throat> so i i feel in a way a more personal so how do you came up with this idea for the song and and the video um high priestess i started with an agenda of creating a song that was like mixing sort of like my sort of like a chanty rap style with punk rock. That was my agenda. I was like, I want to own my unique space here, you know? And <clears throat> so that was it. That's where it started. That was like, usually songs don't start for me with an agenda like that, you know? Okay. And so I started, you know, writing it and it didn't have words yet. I was just like, I write just gibberish. Like I just sing words that don't make any sense. And it's more about melody and <clears throat> flow. So I did all the, I did all the parts. I was like, da -da 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 -da, you know, but there's no words, you know? <laughs> and so I, I did it like that. And then we started working on the track and it was hard. It was harder than I thought because anytime I added what I thought of as like punk elements, like, you know, like real drums or like a guitar, it sounded so stupid. And I was like, I don't want to make rap rock, <laughs> you know, like, I was like, that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, so we just kept pushing and then it became more about the energy, having the angst of punk and, but yet being sort of future sounding and then mixing like new wave keyboards with a punkier sounding vocal in the chorus, you know? So it was really about was finding that that feeling that I wanted and then recognizing that there's a new kind of punk that's just really about using sounds in an aggressive way and having that energy and that's that's punk rock for now you know <laughs> so that's where that came from and um, then then I had started the song lyrically and then I I didn't finish the chorus lyrics and then I had written some other songs and I I kind of came up with the theme of spirituals and the songs really were becoming a lot about my journey the experience of ascension and multi-dimensionality and like really accessing accessing my reach as an artist you know and and my process as an artist and where I go you know to come back with the inspiration and in doing that I came up with the idea of high priestess you know and like and so that's how that became and then ain't ready was a lot of about the internal battle that takes place in finding perseverance and finding a way through when you get knocked down which you know happens a lot I'm a sensitive being I'm an artist right so like of course especially in the world today, you just get knocked down over and over. You know, for instance, Roe versus Wade being overturned. What a fucking blow, you know? Uh, with all the police brutality was going on, what a blow, you know? Like all this stuff and, and you just, it hurts and you get knocked down and, and then you remember how resilient you really are and you remember all the power that you really hold and how, how, how important that is and, and change and, and moving culture forward and you get back up and you keep going and that's what that was about for me ain't ready um as far as the videos I, I was just trying to come up with like little short short video images that just caught the feeling really really quickly and for me being trapped in a room with myself and sort of battling all the different emotions perfectly spoke to perfectly spoke to that and it was interesting because I shot that video on the same day that I shot maybe like three or three, at least three other ideas. Oh, great. And that one was at the end of a long day. 
And I was battling myself literally because I felt like I wasn't doing it good enough. And I was like, ugh. And so I was like, I suck. Throw in a chair. You know what I mean? I was just like really battling myself. So it's actually really taking place. You were, uh, you, you were pushing yourself. I was pushing myself and I'm always pushing myself hard. So um, as far as the, the High Priestess video, I just, I loved it, honestly. People called it out. I was inspired by an old like Chevy Chase movie, <laughs> honestly. Okay. I saw the costume and I was just like, holy shit, that's so sick. <laughs> and so I love the idea of, how do I say this and do I say it? Let me think. I love the idea of this like makeshift version of sort of a higher being or like, you know, like where it's, it's homemade, where you just piece junk together to symbolize a higher version of yourself. Because really, okay. it's all about how we see ourselves, right? And you could be something, somebody that somebody else deems worthless, but if you know your worth, then you're a higher being. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and so I love the idea of the higher be being just being this random person in an outfit roaming through the streets, you know? <laughs> I love that. And that's all it was. And it was so beautiful. And also, you know, the, the beauty of just having like some pieces of lights on your coat and just being, you know? And, cool, moving, that's... and moving in that way that's like connecting you with something higher. Cool, that, that's beautiful, that's good to know. And also, you will be releasing this new album called Spiritual. And because of all these things that happened, I, I just love the name. And I would like to know, it, it was really spiritual indeed for you to record this album? Yeah, I called it Spirituals because, you know, there's traditional Negro spirituals from, you know, the beginning of, of the history of African Americans in this country. And the, the purpose of those songs was basically to create an experience of freedom when when people weren't free to create an avenue to escape an environment that they couldn't really escape by by ascending by moving beyond you know and for me in the midst of all the things we've endured in the past few years the pandemic the the protests the wildfires the like i mean it's just like shootings and the, you know ongoing these songs were my way up and way forward it was an it was a it was an opportunity making these songs were an opportunity for me to move beyond in a spiritual way and to evolve forward and so because of the function of this album for me that's why i named it spirituals they're not traditional spirituals you know obviously <laughs> okay <laughs> that's good to know so You know, you know what I love about these these new songs, um, the sound. You know, it keeps so it keeps so fresh. So I would like to know because you are always uh, how to say it. Uh, your music never disappoints. You know, you always feel fresh. It always feels strong. Your music, your ideas. So what keeps you what keeps you strong in this career? This career sucks, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> music, music business is dead, especially for artists like me who are trying to make real art. Um, what keeps me going and what keeps me strong is the music itself. I love music and what it does for me, nothing else in the world does for me. It keeps me whole and it keeps me positive and it keeps me um, connected to a part of myself that I, I need not to lose connection with and it keeps me connected to something higher that I need not lose connection with. And in doing that, I'm hoping that it will, that I can be a bridge for everyone to help connect to source in this way and to move culture forward. The job of the artist is to move culture forward, to hold up a mirror to culture and say, look, this is where we're at. Looks like we need to change. Absolutely. And so, And so that's what that's why I will I will always make music, you know. Too bad music is so hard to to sustain um, a career at these days. It's gonna hurt the quality of the art coming out, you know, because it's hard for artists right now. But I will always make music, and hopefully, people will always be able to hear it. Of course, you have a lot of fans around the world, and there is something special thing about also about this new album because you were 
with a very uh, interesting army of producers such as uh, Boys Noise, Boys Noise, Doctor School, uh, Nick Sinner, uh, and Subtrack. So, how it was experienced, and how did they help? to shape the final sound on this new album. They were so great. It was so fun to work with all these people, especially during a time where I felt very isolated, you know. I was literally, for part of the time, in a cabin in the woods in Canada, in British Columbia. And um, it was such a special opportunity to be able to like sit and play with these guys virtually. Um, I, I, most of them I'm, were friends of mine, most of them. Dre Skull and I did that last mixtape together, Boys Noise, and I hadn't worked together in a long time, but we've been friends for a long time and we've done work in the past. Rostam, I love working with Rostam. Rostam is like mind. He just jumps across genres and has impeccable taste. I'm such a guitar sound snob and a drum, I'm a snob sound snob, right? So like my drum <laughs> sounds, my guitar sounds, my keyboard sounds need to be cool, right? Absolutely. Rostam is the same. Rostam is the same. I don't have to say anything. And he just like, I'm like, whoa, what did you do? Like, it's great, you know? So it was just cool to work with a bunch of people that speak the same language in that way. Who can, who can, I always like to find people who think across genres, you know, even boys noise. I, I wanted some, some drums that, that were really cool and had a lot of 808s and subs, but that, that weren't so straight, that like that were like, oh, what, what are the influences of these? And he brought that element and Subtract, I had just met Subtract though, before uh, lockdown times, so maybe in like in 2020, I met Subtract, luckily. And okay. he he's a genius and I didn't know, like I knew, you know, I knew his stuff, but like he played me all this stuff and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and he was trying to get me to do a song with him on his record and I was trying to, but I was having a hard time writing to a bunch of stuff and then he sent me this track for um, Shake and I heard it and I just, it was so unlike me. It was like nothing I'd ever done. And I wrote the song literally in like 10 minutes, which also never happens. It just was, it was there waiting to be written. You wow, know, that, that was so quick. It was quick. I that mean, was it was like, boom. And quick. even the first thing out of my mouth, I was like, shake, shake. Like, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. It just came out of my mouth, shake. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And he was like, yeah, this song's cool. It doesn't fit my record. And I was like, can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, so into it. And then he ended up contributing on Ain't Ready, which was, I mean, his, what he brought was genius, uh, which I started with Carlo, Elangelo, um, and Doc, who I, I've, I've written with Doc for, years i mean across all my projects from my band stiffed in 2000 you know to to um to now i've always written with doc and and i guess he and elangelo had worked on the weekend a bunch and so he brought in elangelo and so that was great um i just like when and nick zinner is my buddy and like i work with nick every chance i get he's one of my favorite guitar players and also i know he and i are both really interested in african music and um particularly like african styles of guitar playing and also but then tweaking it so it's not so derivative but it's like fresh okay and i knew nick could do it and i was like hey nick, come play on this and he's like okay you know <laughs> um it's just such a special thing that i can call on all these different people to bring their magic, their unique talents to each song. And then you can build something that doesn't exist when you have so many people who have such different expertise and you can create something really special when you put them all in one place. Cool, awesome. I, I always think that generate community in music is such a special power. Me too. And and also the, the, there will be a, a special celebration for the releasing of this new album which is uh, the Holify tour. Yes. So, so how do you feel about it? How do you prepare this new tour and these new these new live shows? I'm working on it right now, and I better get to work because I think it's going to be a lot. I always try to make the actual experience of performing the songs exciting in a whole different way than actually making the songs. So, I try to bring a lot of creativity and art to it, and. Um, you know, I'm in the process of figuring out how to make it feel. I want you to feel like you got holified by the end of the tour, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to feel like something just happened to you and feel it in your body. So I got to figure out how to make that happen. But I'm excited. I'm excited to perform it for people. 
Well, thank you very much. The time is running out, uh, unfortunately, but I appreciate your time for, for answer to these questions. Thank you so much, Rob. Nice to meet you.